Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy Edwards from PR Media Now. It is time now for the latest update from Atlas Salt. And joining us to discuss today's important news is Atlas Salt President Roland Howe, as well as CEO Patrick Laracy. Gentlemen, it is a pleasure to have you both on our show at the same time as we talk about salt and clean energy. Good to see both of you. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hello. All right. The big news today from Atlas Salt is that it's Officials Brook Salt Dome in Western Newfoundland is much larger than originally believed based on results from a ground gravity survey. Officials Brook is located approximately 15 kilometers southwest of Atlas Salt's unique Great Atlantic Project, a homogeneous and unusually shallow salt deposit immediately next to a deep water port. Now, Roland, I'll begin with you because, of course, you are Mr. Salt. Uh, the fact that Fischl's Brook appears to be so big as a salt dome when you consider Great Atlantic to the northeast and the broader Bay St. George Basin that covers nearly 200 square kilometers of mineral licenses owned by Atlas. What does this tell you about the potential salt endowment of this district? Well, this whole district is underlain by salt. I mean, some people might say that it's actually pregnant with salt. And uh, over, over time, you know, it's, it's uh, geological time, we, we've seen different uh, structures formed. And the Great Atlantic Salt, as you point out, is, is shallow, homogeneous, perfect for mining. And then we have Fischl's Brook, which is a, a salt dome, which is created when salt extrudes through overlying strata. And that's just perfect for uh, establishing some kind of uh, storage facility. So, uh, and, and we've got other bedded deposits too. Great Atlantic, close to the port, accessible. It, it's just the premier mined asset, mining asset to be used here. Now, Roland, you know the salt business better than anyone. Is there anywhere in North America where you have a shallow, homogeneous salt deposit like Great Atlantic and in the immediate vicinity, a salt dome like Fischl's Brook? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, you've probably got bedded salt and domes close by elsewhere, but not as shallow. The bedded, you know, the bedded deposit, which is Great Atlantic, is, is so shallow. It, it's just perfect for uh, accessing it and mining it. Now, we know that uh, what has you excited about Great Atlantic. Uh, what has caught your attention with respect to Fischl's Brook? Is there something new that Mr. Salt has learned about Fischl's Brook that has you particularly excited? I, I think my friend Patrick will be best to describe that. But it's, uh, you know, it, it is it's a big salt dome and uh, is it, it may not be the only one. So it's uh, I think Patrick is probably better suited to tell me about that one. Okay, and it's a pregnant salt dome. I love the way you put that because that puts it all into perspective. Okay, Patrick, let's turn to you now. The Advanced Clean Energy Project in Utah is anchored by a massive salt dome for the storage of green hydrogen and has attracted huge private sector financing as well as half a billion dollars from the Biden administration. So how does the Fischl's Brook Dome compare in size potentially to the dome in Utah, which is believed to be the largest in the Western United States? Well, yeah, the Delta Dome in Utah is a big one, and it's probably the leading project right now for uh, hydrogen storage. So it's a pretty exciting project. We're doing uh, assessment work currently trying to gauge the size of our salt dome uh, versus some others around the world. And uh, we're, uh, we're holding up very, very well. We've got a big salt dome here. We think that the scale of our dome is going to be sufficient to underpin a major hydrogen project. Now, Patrick, the ground gravity survey has produced quite a spectacular image that we are looking at right now. Can you explain what that image is telling us? Well, Cindy, uh, we're pretty excited about this gravity survey. We've recently received the final results. Uh, the survey itself was conducted late last year, and uh, it's produced a boomer gravity anomaly, which you can see in that image. It's uh, roughly oval in shape. It produces a large gravity anomaly because gravity uh, is a measurement of rock density. 
And salt is a relatively low density rock, so it produces this beautiful gravity signature. And we were surprised that it's of a scale which exceeds our anticipation. Originally, we were talking about the Fischl's Brook having an aerial size of about 2.25 square kilometers. And we're basing that on the existing historic drilling. But when we look at the actual gravity anomaly itself, it's coming in over five square kilometers in aerial size. So we had the uh, geophysicists model the gravity data into three dimensions, and they've done that quite successfully. And it's a very uh, interesting shaped anomaly, again, with the an, an aerial size exceeding five square kilometers. So we're quite happy with the results. It's enormous. Now, major companies like Fortescue, who have expressed an interest in hydrogen development in Newfoundland and Labrador, are sure to get the backing of the provincial government as well as the federal government. That has to be a big factor in favor of your plans for Fishel's Brook, yes? Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, government support is uh, critical at this stage of development for hydrogen projects in particular, also wind projects. Uh, you know, government support is really a tailwind for projects like this. There's government financial support, there's regulatory support, and uh, that's encouraging companies to make the scale of investment that is required to get these projects off the ground. And these are big investments. These are billion dollar projects. It's impressive. All right. The government of Newfoundland and Labrador recently lifted a moratorium on the development and export of wind power. So what would be the significance of that to the Fishel's Brook project and broader plans for the Atlas spin out? Again, uh, I think it's a clear demonstration on behalf of the provincial government that they realize the potential for wind energy in the, pro in the province, and they want to integrate that into their larger energy picture. As you may be aware, Newfoundland only recently became connected to the North American electrical grid by way of a subsea cable between Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. And Newfoundland is dominated by clean hydroelectricity. In addition to that, we're very well endowed with wind energy. So the province is uh, putting itself in a position to optimize and take advantage of the tremendous energy assets in the province. Now, Patrick, you have a lot of experience in the oil and gas sector. Uh, this sector knows all about salt domes. They are so valuable for storage. Can you elaborate on that for us, please? Well, first of all, they're very big. I mean, uh, the salt dome at Fishel's Brook is currently modeled in excess of five square kilometers. Just think about that. And we know it's been drilled at least 700 meters thick, and those holes ended in salt. So the modeling that we put together suggests it's substantially thicker than that. So that's a tremendous uh, potential storage tank. Uh, additionally, salt is uh, seen as perhaps the best rock into which to store gases because salt does not leak, it's impervious. So it's a fundamentally ideal rock to store gas. It's large. And they tend to be at the appropriate depths for storing gaseous material. Because when you store this uh, gas, you need to pressure it up. And salt has the geomechanical properties to allow that to happen on a repeatable basis. So you put all those factors together and nothing compares in scale to underground storage in salt domes. Extraordinary. All right. You picked up the Fishel's Brook asset from the Newfoundland and Labrador government a few years ago. Did you ever imagine it would become the cornerstone of an entirely new company? Uh, not really. Uh, a lot has happened in the last two or three years. Initially, we acquired the salt dome as a potential source of rock salt, but additionally, keeping an eye, <clears throat> excuse me, an eye on the storage potential as well. 
at the time, we thought it may be uh, available for CO2 sequestration, uh, potentially natural gas storage. But as you know, over the last two years, hydrogen and clean energy has risen to the fore and salt domes are seen as integral parts of major clean energy projects. And what are the next steps for officials, Brooke Patrick, in terms of advancing this project? Well, currently we are compiling an inventory of all of the known, so to speak. So what we know about it geologically, geophysically, and from the drilling. I mean, there are five holes into this salt dome, four of which penetrated the salt, another ended at the top of the salt dome. So we're going to put uh, an inventory of all of that geological, geophysical data together along with the drilling and uh, compile that information so we are absolutely certain of what it is we have. And with that factual information, uh, it will allow us to do a full geotechnical evaluation of the salt dome. And that geotechnical evaluation will look at the engineering aspects. So it'll look at the ability to wash out caverns, how many caverns are potentially uh, available in the Fishel's Brook Salt Dome, what challenges there may be in terms of washing out those caverns. So that uh, geotechnical evaluation will be critical to putting the potential storage asset in front of key partners and engaging them in a much larger clean energy hub for this area. Exciting news all around. Patrick Laracy, Roland Howe from Atlas Salt. Thank you both very much for joining us today. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. And you can go to atlassalt.com for more information. And thank you for tuning in. Have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you again next time.